Today we have this really interesting integral involving trigonometric functions and nested square roots. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine x divided by the square root of 1 plus the square root of sine 2x. Okay, cool. So since we have an interval of integration from 0 to pi by 2, and we have trigonometric functions, a phase shift seems feasible. And normally a phase shift is pretty useful in these kind of structures. So I'm going to call the integral i for reference purposes, and the phase shift would be moving from the x world to the pi by 2 minus x world. So that means i equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine of pi by 2 minus x divided by square root 1 plus square root sine of 2x. So 2 times pi by 2 is just pi minus 2x now. Okay, so in the numerator of the integral, we have sine pi by 2 minus x, and that phase shift turns the sine function into the cosine function, whereas in the denominator, we have 1 plus the square root of sine of pi minus something. Now, the sine of pi minus something is the sine of that something once again. So we have sine 2x again in the square root. Okay, so these are two different structures for exactly the same integral. And they're pretty much the same. The only difference is in the numerator. One has a sine and the other has a cosine. So let's add them up. Adding them gives me 2 times i equal to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine x plus sine x divided by the common denominator. That is square root 1 plus square root sine 2x dx. And what to do from here? Well, looking at the numerator gives me a hint to what kind of substitution I need. I need a substitution that will give me this structure for the differential element. So I need the cosine of x plus sine x dx equal the differential of something else. So that would be du, and that's pretty easy. So the substitution I need is to let the sine of x minus the cosine of x equal to u. And that would imply the structure for the new differential element. Okay, cool. Now what about the limits? Well, as x approaches 0, we have 0 minus 1 here. So that means u would approach negative 1. Whereas as x approaches pi by 2, we have a 1 minus 0 thing, so u approaches 1. This implies that i equals multiplying by the reciprocal of 2 on both sides, 1 half the integral from negative 1 to positive 1 of du divided by 1 plus the square root of what exactly? Well, this substitution is pretty useful for this thing here. I'm going to write this, I'm going to expand this as 2 times sine x cosine x by the double angle formula for the sine function. And I can get this cross product of sine and cosine terms by just looking at my substitution and squaring it. Because this implies you have sine square x plus cosine square x minus 2 times sine x cosine x all equal to u squared, and sine squared plus cosine squared is just a 1. So this means if this is u squared, it implies that 2 times sine x cosine x equals 1 minus u squared. So we have a 1 minus u squared term down here. Okay, so this integral is a lot easier to work with. We're rid of the trigonometric functions, but we still have a nested square root. But again, the structure is pretty convenient because it motivates a trigonometric substitution. So I'm going to let u equal the sine of phi. And this implies that du equals cosine phi d phi. Now, for u to approach 1, wait a second, we can work something with the limits here. Notice that the integrand is an even function of u, so that means we could just integrate from 0 to 1 and double the result. So that gets rid of the constant multiple outside. 
And for you to approach zero, all we need is phi to approach zero, whereas for you to approach one, we need phi to approach pi by two. So we're back to an integral from zero to pi by two, and this time we have the cosine of phi d phi divided by square root one plus square root one minus u squared. Now u squared is now sine square phi, and one minus the squared sine is the squared cosine, and it's in a square root, so we write this as cosine phi. Okay, great. And again, this is a pretty nice structure to work with because all we need is some basic trigonometry. And by basic trigonometry, I mean writing out a double angle formula for the cosine function. And we're going to write that double angle formula as a half angle one. By that, I mean that we know cosine phi should be equal to twice the squared cosine of phi by two minus one. So we can use this equation here to work out nicer structures for the numerator and the denominator. So this implies that i equals the integral from zero to pi by two of two times the squared cosine of phi by two minus one divided by square root two times cosine phi by two. Again, squared cosine phi by two. Okay, everything's looking good so far. Now I'm just gonna use the linearity of the integration operator. We have two by root two, and it grow from zero to pi by two. And let's see, for the first term, you have the squared cosine divided by a linear cosine because of the cancellation of square and square root functions. So we have cosine phi by two minus, again, now you have the reciprocal of the squared cosine uh, of the cosine function, the cosine of five by two, that is. And wait. Yeah, much better. So that means we now have the secant of five by two. Okay, and this is pretty simple to evaluate. We have one by root two times integrating the cosine gives me a sine function. So we have sine five by two times two again, but we have to divide by the derivative of the argument, the argument being phi by two. So we, derive, uh, we divide by one half, and that's the same as multiplying by two. So we have four times the sine function minus the antiderivative of the secant function is the natural logarithm of the secant plus the tangent. And again, we have to divide by the argument, which equal the derivative of the argument that is, which in this case equals two. And the limits are zero and pi by two. So in the limit as phi approaches zero, everything just collapses to zero, but the pi by two limit is much better. We have four times the sine of pi by four. So that would be four, uh, four by root two minus two times the logarithm. And now secant pi by four is root two, whereas tangent pi by four is one. Okay, and now let me just multiply out this one by root two. That will give me four by two, which is two minus two divided by root two is root two. Natural log root two plus one, which is a pretty nice result. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.